You ever wonder why you're advised to move your legs on a long flight? Here to explain why is Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. You know, if you're sitting trapped in an airplane seat, chances are you're not going to move around very much. And that increases your risk for having a blood clot form in your veins. Now, it's not the flying. It's actually the lack of movement. And so your risk is increased any time that you're in a situation that you're not moving much for hours on end. And it can happen literally anywhere you are. Clots can happen in those deep veins. You normally can't see them. And most often it occurs in your legs. It's called a deep vein thrombosis. The danger is that clot can actually travel through the veins to the lungs. That blocks blood flow. It's called a pulmonary embolism. Clots can also cause that blood in the heart to back up. And all these factors make a pulmonary embolism potentially deadly, which is, of course, why we're talking about it. That's exactly right. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, well, why does a clot form in my veins anyway? So unlike arteries, which are moving blood away from the heart and are driven by the heart's pumping, veins are returning blood and they rely on muscle movement or compression. So it's really the squeezing of the muscles that helps the blood flow through the veins, kind of like what happens to the toothpaste. So it's the squeezing of the tube that pushes the toothpaste out. When you stop squeezing, the toothpaste stops, and that's when a clot can form. Certainly people who are obese or have a family history of blood clots, they're at higher risk. Smoking is a risk factor, as is taking birth control pills. So if you have multiple risk factors, it magnifies your chances of developing a blood clot. Exactly, and you know, pregnancy is also a risk, in part because a pregnant woman's blood is prone to clotting, and body changes can actually increase the pressure on veins as well. Symptoms to look out for. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone's gonna have all these symptoms, but sudden swelling of one leg, unexplained pain or tenderness of the lower leg or calf muscle, changes in skin color, with skin that may even be a bit warmer to the touch. If the clot travels to the lungs, then you might experience shortness of breath with chest pain or even coughing up blood. Here's the deal, if you think you have a blood clot, you have to get medical attention right away. If you've had recent surgery, cancer, broken bones, these all increase your risk as well. And if you've had any of these things, you should talk to your doctor about whether or not there's some precautions you may need to take. If there's a suspicion of a clot, there's actually a non-invasive test that can be done using ultrasound that allows you to examine or check the blood flow through the veins. These are compression boots. They'll prescribe these along with other treatments or not. It could be with or without. And these boots um, you'd wear during surgery or after surgery to reduce the risk of developing a clot. And when these are on, they squeeze your feet and your calves, and that keeps the blood flowing. And you mentioned surgery. There are other reasons sometimes people are bedridden. But to decrease your risk, be sure to exercise regularly, getting moving. If you're sitting for a long period of time, maybe it's on a job, we mentioned flying or traveling, try to get up and walk as much as possible. If you are stuck in your chair, try little exercises, literally. Just making circles with your feet, pumping your calf muscles, moving your knees towards your chest. Any movement contracts those muscles and helps that blood flow get back to the heart and so it doesn't just sit there and stagnate. And if you think that you're at higher risk, you should go to your doctor and see if there's any way to bring that risk down. And of course, if you want more information, you can go to gethealthystayhealthy.com. And you can visit the doctorstv.com. As usual, Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall, thank you. As thank always, you. such Great important TV. information.